looking for a workout program? Lucky for you, I know exactly who you should go to, 18 Alpha Fitness. That's at 18 Alpha Fitness on Instagram or 18alphafitness.com. Kevin Edgerton, owner-operator, not only has he been through the selection courses as a Green Beret, he's also picked up a whole bunch of medical credentials. And then on top of that, he's been a coach within the Air Force Spec Warfare Pipeline. And I've seen the results, and this, uh, the results are good. Very successful. So Kevin is that perfect merger of experience, both as student and as cadre. And he brings that together with the science. And he's always learning as much as he can. Uh, we've had him on the podcast. He'll tell you all about it. Um, so the flexibility, the breathing, uh, the strength, the conditioning. And not only will Kevin tell you what to do, but if you follow Kevin, what you'll realize very, very quickly is that he still lives that lifestyle. He's got an old gray beard, and uh, I'm still scared of him. So head on over to 18 Alpha Fitness, use your ones ready code, get your discount, and uh, let Kevin help you achieve your goals. Welcome to the ones ready team room, everybody. Hi, I'm Aaron. We're here with the whole team. I'm back off the road. Peach has finally let me have like two weeks at my house in his benevolence as my chief, and then Trent's down in San Antonio as, as per our normal agreement. So what's up? Uh, big shout out. Thanks to everybody that's been following the YouTube. You guys can tell we've got a crap ton more content that we've been putting out. We've been trying to change it up. And uh, that actually came from somebody in the DMs. It was like, hey, guys, I love your podcast, but I don't have an hour to listen to you babble on about all types of crap. Could you make some shorter videos? And we were like, yeah, we would totally make some shorter videos. So check out the YouTube short section. We've got a ton more stuff that's coming to you. So Appreciate everybody that's been following and liking the project, sharing it out. Maybe caress that subscribe button. Just caress, give it, give it a tiny rub and make sure that those notifications are on and uh, share it with a friend. I have no idea why we're uh, so popular only in a really specific niche, but here we are. So maybe, maybe tell your friends. Are your friends getting ready for the IFT? Well, wow, we have an episode for you. That was a trend segue. Do you like that? I'm a little jealous. That's that's my lane, dude. Don't don't step in my lane. <laughs> it's terrible segues. This week we're talking all about the IFT, the initial fitness test. What's the initial fitness test? It used to be called the past. And let me start off with a little rant. It's important to call things the right names when you're talking to your friends and when you guys are talking to your recruiters. I know stuff changes a lot, but words have meanings, and that's my ism as a guy in the career field. So today we're going to talk about the initial fitness test. The initial fitness test used to be the pass test, and it's your ticket to ride the ride in the pipeline. You take this test as your initial look to see how well you're doing, and then you enter into your development program. So we're going to talk about the initial fitness test, the candidate fitness test, and then the operator fitness test. So IFT, CFT, OFT. We've got all the standards pulled up for you right now. I'm going to let Peaches start to jump into this bad boy. Peaches, why don't you break them off? What is the initial fitness test? The initial fitness test is, you know, you kind of said it already. It's what you need to, to come in. It's, it's the pay to play kind of thing. But, um, I mean, I'm going to be kind of frank and maybe even condescending. I'm going to take a page out of Aaron's book and, uh, man, <laughs> it maybe start today? with, like, I know <laughs> everybody so woke up really mad. <laughs> we just woke up and chose violence here at the one turning. <laughs> <Like, laughs> dang, dude. <laughs> Um, yeah, I mean, I'll, I'll be pretty frank. The, uh, the IFT is pretty easy. So, um, if you're not there, you should be there pretty fast. Um, but with that said, everybody's got some real life stuff to going on and some things that they're working through. So, um, but again, it's our entry level just to be able to be considered to come into Air Force Special Warfare. So starting off with, you got to do some pull-ups and we're talking not chin-ups where your palms are facing you, but Palms out, chin ups, strict, no kipping, no um, no cross hip pull ups, butterfly pull ups, or anything like that. They are they are strict, up down, up down, um, and it's also making sure. I can't reach What's the that? bar though. What if I can't reach the bar from the ground? Will they give me a stool Everybody. or? <laughs> all, all three of us, huh? All three of us. That was. <laughs> But guys, should we start over? Should should I just like should I hit the intro all over again and we should start over? No, Trent. If you can, you can you're allowed to use a small box to get to the bar. Peaches, I'm sorry. Trent is Trent was really mean. Continue talking about your pull-ups. Yeah, you got to have a human ladder help you up. <laughs> <laughs> no aids. No um, aids. Yeah. So, you're looking at eight 
eight pull-ups for a minimum, uh, chin over the bar, and, and something that we like to talk about it also is that, okay, so yeah, if I get the chin over the bar, yes, technically that is a rep, but you got to think at the angle that the, that the evaluators and the people counting your pull-ups are at, they're looking from, from down on the ground up at you. So this right here, even though it is technically a rep, to, to them, it may not look like it. So you just wasted a rep, potentially, right? So try to get right here. That way there's no question. Even if you got to kind of chicken head your, your neck out there or your chin out there, fine. But like leave no doubt when you're doing, and, and that goes for any of these movements, leave no doubt that you actually got a rep because how crappy would that be if you're at number eight and that's that's your max, you're at eight and you just barely get over but from their angle, it looks like you didn't get it, and now you don't get to play. So yeah, we used to uh, when we were instructing. We used to Trent. I see your hand. I'll get to you in a second. When we were instructing, we used to say that you had to break the vertical and the horizontal plane of the bar with your chin. So there's two planes, right? Vertical and horizontal plane. We would tell people, hey, if you don't want to, if you don't want to make me wonder if you've actually broken the plane of the bar with your chin, break the horizontal and the vertical plane of the bar, and you'll be good to go. There's always a rule of thumb, right? So any any good uh, you know any any good business plans for about ten percent breakage, you can just assume that the instructor is going to take away like ten percent maybe ish of your reps because you think your reps are perfect. I will tell you right now, your reps are not perfect. We are going to hold you to a very high standard for these calisthenics. So you figure one pull up. If you can only do eight and you're squeaking out eight every single time, I bet one of those probably isn't to standard. So just keep that in mind. Yeah. So I've got two things. Thanks for calling on me, Aaron. Appreciate it. Good morning. Um, <laughs> I'm not even the host. Yeah. Let's just yeah, keep going. Yeah, with yeah. It. I do like a, a for the pull ups, I kind of do like a, a question mark type thing where I come up and over and stare down at whoever's counting. Uh, just a thought. So there's no question. Second thing. <clears throat> It hurts my feelings a little bit, and there's a little bit of a left turn, that we talk about the minimums. Should we establish, like, a, a recommended ones ready minimums before before joining? Like, right now, live? We haven't talked about I'm this, totally guys. okay with that. I, I am 100% <laughs> okay with this sort of thing. They used to have, uh, what what they call them before? In development, they had the Superman... What yeah. the Superman level or the Superman standard or something that had a certain number where they, you know, this is passing the, it used to be, this is passing the pass test. And then this is close. I know in back in our day, we used to call it grad standards because we knew what that grad standard test was out of it. And, and I had a lot of friends that were like, I'm not even going to apply unless I'm at grad standards before I start. That's what I'm saying. We should have an OR standard. That's like maybe nothing crazy, but these are the numbers, the types of numbers that we see coming in the front door that, that tend to make it. Because okay. it, so, it goes against the grain of the community to talk about minimums. You know what I mean? Like it just right. hurts my heart a little bit. It does. Okay. So let's, we'll, we'll, we'll do this in chunks then, right? So let's start with pull-ups. So eight is the minimum, but that ain't, that ain't doing it. Right. So what would you say, Trent? What, what would your number be for, all right, you have a, you have a better shot. 13. I was going to say at least 12. So I agree with your 13. We can what do you got? 12 is a nice I can round get, number. I can get on board with that. I, I've okay. got something at the at the end that I'll that I'll say that we've said before, so it's a repeat, but it'll tie into to these whole numbers, these OR numbers. Okay. So I, let's can we agree on twelve? Is twelve a nice round sure. number? Okay. Twelve is the magic number for pull ups. Don't talk to me about crushing the when you DM us and you're like, listen, I'm crushing the IFT. If that number isn't twelve pull ups, we gotta talk. You're not crushing it. All right. I think we're good here. The council was spoken. Moving on to the next movement. <laughs> Table has been slapped. Table's been slapped, homie. All right. Well, uh, sit ups then, right? So pull ups, two minute rest. You knock out your, you know, recommended twelve because you're crushing it, right? Crushing it. And then sit ups. So uh, since we're talking about a minimum of fifty, uh, what's the OR standard for that? And then we'll go into the actual like standards in terms of interlocking fingers and all that kind of stuff. I think you got to be around 70 here. I think At least 50 70. Is, yeah, 70 is kind of the floor. I think 70 is just a little little bit more up. I mean, check my math here, but there's 60 seconds in a minute, right? Um, you get uh, one of those every uh, every second or so, you know, a little bit shorter than one a second, and you're just knocking them out for your entire testing time. I think 70 is about right. 
I think most folks, will, if you're good at setups, can knock out 45 to 50 in like the first 30 seconds and then just grind yeah, out the rest of them. For sure. Yeah. Okay. 70 it is. So in the standard for this, um, again, these, what, what kind of set, what kind of sit-ups are these? I know they're not the hands, they're interlaced hands behind the head. Is that what they are? Yeah, I think so. They, they haven't changed yep. the standards about the, the sit-ups or anything. So web, webbing to webbing, yeah. back of the head and your elbows, don't move your elbows. They're either in or they're out. So a lot of guys do Yeah, that. there's no, there's no chicken winging. Right. There's right. Dude, by the way, like, again, old school back in the day, there was a, a lot of bounce you could get from those elbows hitting the ground or hitting the mats with some force and then using that rebound sort of to sit back up. We figured it out. You need to touch your shoulder blades to the mat behind you and then immediately return. And keep in mind, at any time, if you stop, if you look like you're resting, there is no rest position for any of these things. It's basically you're just putting out the entire time. So if you look like you're stopping for any more than a second or two, the instructor 100% might be like, okay, you're done. So keep that in mind as well. Yeah, the only alibi that might be pull-ups just because you can hang. <laughs> you, can, you can continue to hang and kind of get sucks. your, you know, but you're still burning energy. I wouldn't call a hang a rest necessarily, no. but yeah. So, okay, then you get a two-minute rest after that, and then you go right into push-ups. Now, right now, the minimums are 40. What are we talking? I... So for me, I, and granted, I get it, short arms, you know, the whole deal. Um, but I'm thinking 70, but that's me. Yeah, I was going to go a little bit lower, you know, the 55 or the 60 realm. And here's the only reason why. Guys and gals, you need to be doing this IFT. You'll notice that we're reading it in order with a time rest in between. You need to be practicing your IFT like this. You need to be doing your pull-ups and then taking a two-minute rest and doing your sit-ups and taking a two-minute rest and then doing your push-ups and taking the appropriate rest because it's important to put these things. The magic is in the mixing. If you just test your push-ups one day and you're like, I got 80 push-ups today. Well, you did that fresh or you did that maybe at the beginning of a workout. You didn't do it after pull-ups and sit-ups smoked you a little bit on a minimum amount of rest. So for me, I'm willing to start like respecting the magic is in the mix here. And I'd say like 60 to 70 for me is good here. If you're dropping a solid, perfect 60 push-ups here, I'm not mad at 60 push-ups. But I, I also agree with 70 is kind of like that end goal. When people DM us and they tell us, hey, we're crushing it. If you're still dropping 70 push-ups here, you get you get the old eyebrow raise for me. You're like, okay, uh, maybe, maybe we got something here. So I think the, the OR standard has just been set at 65. That's what it sounds like to me. Sure. Sure. That sounds so good. The land but to compromise the team. Yeah. <laughs> well, somebody's got to do it because today we're on one, baby. <laughs> Fantastic. Uh, yes. Fantastic. Uh, but let's talk about the, the standards. So this is um, think high plank, completely locked out. You don't have your, your butt in the air. You're not, you know, putting your, your junk in the dirt kind of thing. You are nice and flat and it is a, you're not, you know, um, potato chipping or um, what's another one like downward dog. You know, yeah. you're not doing that. Yeah. Um, you're not doing, you know, fist push ups or, or luckily you're not doing finger push ups or anything like right. that. It's, it's straight up and, you know, break. Again, it goes back to the to kind of pull up things, leave no doubt. So if you're like me and you could just go super, super fast, right? Well, that, that may serve me well in some regards, but if, if the counter is trying to count me and he or she can't actually see like, okay, did I hit my chest? Did I break 90 on my elbows? Like then I'm just doing reps and I'm going so fast that I'm already burning through by the time that evaluator figures out like zero, zero, zero. Right, yeah, exactly. I'm, I'm already, I've, I've lost four or five reps already. Right. So, and it's, it's a, it's a game between whoever's evaluating. And this was always really, really tough. You think it's easy just to, to count pushups. Well, I'm evaluating every single rep. And for the pushup, what I'm looking for is, is your body a single plane? Are you a single plank that is going to the ground in a single fashion and then coming up in a single fashion head has to be in a neutral position. Your elbows have to break 90 your chest. If it doesn't touch the ground, it should come within about a fifth length. We actually used to have people that would sit next to you and put their fist underneath your chest and you would have to touch their fist every single time that you did one of these reps. So as I'm trying to count 
and physically watch all of these things. If you're just balling through reps, like Peaches is saying, if you're just like going as fast as you can and you look a little spastic, I don't care that you did 120 push-ups. If you can do 120 push-ups, and there are people that can do 120 push-ups, you know, Ivan Ruiz famously, that dude had the push. I think he still might have the push-up record on the board down at school. Um, he had it for a long time, I want to say, but there are people that can do 120, you know, good solid push-ups in a minute. If you can do 120 push-ups in a minute, then you can do 75 perfect ones in a minute and you won't get one taken away from you. So for all of these things, you know, there's, there's amateur and then there's pro level, right? Amateurs can knock out these numbers and, and drop ridiculous numbers, right? But pros can knock out about 90% of those numbers, but they can do it so perfectly that you leave no doubt that those are perfect reps every single time. So keep that in mind when you're training as well. Form should be first, and then intensity and numbers should come after that. So I would rather see you, you know, drop 60, 65 pushups with perfect form, as opposed to dropping 90 pushups where I take 10 or 15 away. Yeah, for sure. And I think what, what we see is a lot of the things um, that, a lot of the candidates, the thing that goes is not their, their shoulders or their chest or their triceps. No. The thing that goes first is their core. So I always yep. recommend uh, mastering the, the high plank first, uh, the front leaning rest position or the cone rest position, as I like to call it, because that's where cones I like rest. It. Right. Um, uh, before you, you really <clears throat> start moving on to, to high numbers of push ups, because you, you will find, especially after your sit ups and your, your pull ups, what wants to go is, you know, chest to knees, not. Uh, you know, your chest and your shoulders and everything else. And once your form yep. goes, it just blows everything else out. It does. Yep. And uh, do, do we all know why? We, I know we got this DM the other day, not to derail, but do we know why we call each other cones in the pipeline? Have we ever have we ever put that out there? Have we ever like the history lesson of why cones are called cones? Well, there's a couple different stories out there. There's a couple different stories out there, indeed. I don't know. Maybe maybe we'll address that in a live or something. But I know we got the DM <laughs> the other day, and I was just like, yeah. They were like, what's a cone? And I was like, well, first of all, they're not really people. Um, yeah. I can tell you that much. They it's don't true. have feelings. <laughs> they don't have they don't have work schedules, and they don't have a work life balance. I can tell you what they I can tell you what they aren't. You know what I mean? They're, I can tell you what I can tell you. Cones are good at taking out trash and like mopping stuff. Like, you know what I mean? But I don't know. I've spoken you to know what else? people who, who say that they were there when it happened, when the, the transition. When, when, from... when the, really, when the cone thing happened. That's yeah. fantastic. So, well, uh, you know what else cones are good at? They're good at running, especially yeah. in 1.5 <laughs> miles. I'm just doing nothing but Trent, like Trent segues just, today. I'm just going to leave. I mean, I'm. what am I here for? <laughs> Don't take that away from him. Uh all right, so we get the push-ups knocked out, right? So we decided the OR standard here is, is 65. We agreed, 65 solid push-ups, and you get the eyebrow raise and, like, the, hmm, okay, from the team. And then we're moving into this run. So you get 10 minutes rest after the cows. So the way the IFT goes, right, pull-ups, two-minute rest, push or uh, sit-ups, excuse me, two-minute rest, and then push-ups. And then after all that, you get a 10-minute rest, right? And really, that's your warm-up to start this 1.5-mile run. So now it's a 10-20 minimum. So if we're doing quick math here, that's just under a seven minute pace. Okay. So for a mile and a half, 1030 is a dead on seven minute pace. So you have to run this bad boy at 1020. So for uh, a mile pace, what do you guys think is the OR standard? You mean uh, fresh? Like if I, if I, or having taken this, like we'll, we'll, as, we'll as do a both progression. Of them. Yeah, we'll do, we'll do both of them. So how fast, um, when people are like, okay, my runtime has been struggling, when am I ready to take the IFT? And they're ready to go out and, and run that 1.5 mile, we'll, we'll go fresh first. What's the line where they should be like, okay, I'm ready? For me, I, I'd say it's a 9.45 fresh and a, and a 10 to 10.05, um, you know, taking the test. Okay. Well, Trent, I mean, this is where... We're gonna see our, our differences. Uh, when when I'm like reviewing retraining paperwork, if you're not a, a nine thirty, <clears throat> I'm not I'm not getting excited about you at all. But say, like, say that again. If you're not a nine what thirty nine thirty, so like a six fifteen pace. I mean, it's a mile and a half, guys. It's not. 
Well, I'm just crazy. thinking about my little legs running around there, you know? <laughs> okay, okay. I, have I, you I ever seen me? Have you ever seen me run a mile and a half? I know Aaron has. What does it look like? <laughs> His little legs are just dee, 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 so fast. His turnover rate is ridiculous. I, I love hearing that from your end of it because when I cross trained, running was like I went to Indoc, no kidding, at probably like 215. Because I took the last two weeks off and I was just like, listen, I know what Indoc is already. You know, this is my second go at it. I showed up and I actually got made fun of um, weeks later, like eight weeks later, I got made, it was partially like made fun of and partially like the guy questioned my integrity because at that point, eight weeks later, fast forward, I was running, I ran the only mile and a half that I've ever run that it was a respectable time. I ran an 845 mile and a half at, at the end of Indoc because I was 35 pounds lighter and I'd been running 10 miles a day for 10 weeks, right? So no kidding, the running coach looked at me and he was like, oh, I guess you've been sandbagging this entire time. I was like, first of all, your running program got me here. Why wouldn't you take credit for that? Second of all, I'm 30 pounds lighter. I weigh 180 pounds comparatively. All that to say, when I came in, I was like the seven minute pace. That was my goal. So, you know, Trent, my my uh, retraining phase one packet would have come across your desk and you'd have been like staff sergeant Aaron Love running a blistering 1030 for his mile and a half. Um, you know, that's, that's a, that's a thing uh, that happened, but I agree with you. I also think that you need to be right in between that 630 to 645 pace and you need to be able to dial it in. And I think that's more important than anything else. I should be able to tell you, Hey, I want you to run a 630 and you could run me a 630. And then I say, okay, cool take it up to like a 650 pace and you should be able to no no kidding dial in a 650 pace and run that bad boy so all that to say i agree with the the 1.5 mile standard i think you should be able to nail you know in between a 945 and a 10 anytime i i think that should not you should not have to try to hit a 945 mile and a half right it should not kill, it should not crush you no, this should not be your only event of the day where you need to go have a smoothie afterwards and, you know, post it on Instagram as a new PR. <laughs> like, I, I think at any time I should be able to grab you out of your office and be like, hey, we're going to go run this thing. And you should be like, okay, what do you want the base to be? 945? Okay, fine. Don't come into my office and ask me to do that <clears throat> next week. I would never do that. I would never do something that's disrespectful. I only come into your office to talk about good things, too. If I have something that's seriously going to mess your that day up, I always... That is not true. That is not always... true. <laughs> <laughs> it's not true either. Oh man, my favorite, my favorite yesterday was I'm sitting texting. Uh, here's here's behind the curtain, everybody. We're texting on the group chat, and usually you get released a little bit early on Fridays, and it's the chief's job to put the email out. And I was texting him, going, "Hey man, are you ever gonna let us out of work? What the heck, man?" <laughs> it was slightly more colorful than that. For it, yeah, it, well, yeah, <laughs> it was, but I can't. Yeah. Oh, oh, so uh, all, right. all right. Sub 10. Just be sub 10 easy. Sub 10. And make it yeah. look good. Rule number one, look good, guys and gals. Yeah. <laughs> Always. But, but, but that's, that's, that uh, seven minute pace for distance. Behavior. Yeah. I, yeah. I think that, that seven minute pace for distance is, is a good goal, you know, for like your, your six milers or whatever. If you can do six miles at a seven minute pace and not, not oh, feel yeah. like you're going to die. Like I think everybody that, a, that uh, seems to be like a, a an unspoken standard, industry standard. Well, the yeah. the other thing too about assessment selection that you'll figure out is you guys are gonna guys and girls, you guys will be at A and S, and you will just like gravitate towards a uh, you know sometimes it's a group of people. I had one guy that was my friend. His name's Mark. He was he was previously a, uh, a PJ, but now he's a crow. Yes, Trent, you're laughing. I had one friend. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That, well, that sounds about right. 130 people started my team. I had one friend. That's actually a higher percentage that I'm working with in my, my normal life right now. So <laughs> I know thousands of people and I'm talking to both of my friends right now. Um, but my friend Mark, we, we ran we ran every run together, every single one. We would just dial it in at like this 645 pace. Everybody else would be off doing their thing. And we would just be like, hey, you ready to go? And we figured it out real early, like one of our first or second runs. We just ran well together and like we just would crush it and they would laugh every single time the instructors figured it out about three weeks in they were just like oh 
Love and Joe's Law, if you guess just just gonna run together, huh? And we would just try we just be like, All right, man. And we ran together every single week. So just a little bit of a shake and bake. That's all a little bit of good. shake and bake. It was always good. And then uh <laughs> we actually dialed it in so much he tore his quad on the sixth on the fifth week eval. And on the sixth week eval, we were just so used to running together at the same exact pace that he and I were able to, you know, finish that run, you know, much to his credit. He just gritted through it. But Jeez, um, man, I know heinous. it was bad. Yeah. But, but the, uh, so that seven minute pace, that's important to be able to dial that in. Oh, yeah. So then you get half an hour of rest, man, 30 minutes uh, before you head to the pool. So that gives you time to gather up all your stuff and then make your way over to the pool. Um, and kind of to be clear, this yourself. is. This, yeah, this isn't like 30 minutes to get to the pool. This is 30 minutes after that run. The instructor is going to start a clock and you're in the water ready to go. So yep. this transition time is important too in preparation. Like, hey, I have to be ready to move from the pool or from the track to the pool in the appropriate swim gear ready to do this event. Yeah, so if you need to grab a granola bar or hydrate or whatever, like that's your time. But get that heart rate down and, and get ready for some underwaters because you're going to have – uh, two 25 meter underwaters that are pass fail event, um, meaning you're on one side of the pool, you go subsurface, you do not break the surface until you reach the other side of the pool. Um, whatever, and in this sense, this is an IFT, it's whatever stroke it takes for you to get to the other side of the pool, but you need to be subsurface, meaning nothing breaks the surface of the water. Not pass your feet, fail event. not your hips. Not your hands, not the back of your head. If you tell the instructor, well, I didn't break with my face, I assure you, and I speak for instructors and evaluators everywhere, we don't care. Don't break the surface of the water with your body. Can, can I there go back to go. the run real quick? One of the things that <laughs> happens when, uh, oh, when you take this test in groups, and I just want to go through the cascading effect, is uh, if, if you're the last to finish the run, then you are legit getting the minimum rest time before you go in the water. So um, the, the the more in shape you are, if you finish first on the run, you're probably gonna have an extra three minutes of rest. And especially if you're not smoked, like this is where these things like creep up on you. Even if you're good in the water, you're getting the minimum rest time and you're getting in there and you're getting smoked uh, because you struggled through the run. So uh, finishing first is, is always the best way to go or close to always. first. Yeah. It does pay to be a winner. It does. And then you get a three minute rest, which this will be probably the longest rest that you will ever do from underwaters because it's not a three minute every minute on the minute. It's a right. there's no problem there. You, once you get yeah, yeah once you no. get back, three but minutes let me, start. Let me talk about this too, because people used to freak <laughs> people used to freak out. Like underwaters are always your first event, right? Like any water con session, underwaters are always the first event, right? This is your first water con event. And people talk about intervals. For the longest time, people always think the 50 is hard. The 50 is not hard. Trent, Peaches, and I, we could all get in right now and do a 50. Could we all get in and do five 25s on a 130 oh. interval? That's a little oh. bit different, right? So, but let me talk about this interval. You don't, you're not doing two 25s on a three minute interval. You're doing 125 on a 30 minute interval because you got rest all the way up to that first one. And then you're doing one more 25 on a three minute interval. Right. If you think about that in your underwaters, those five twenty fives at one thirty, it becomes a little bit less mentally scary. I guess you're not doing five on one twenty five. It's not like you're doing one one underwater to start and then okay, now the clock starts. Now you're doing five on an interval. You have infinite rest until you go on that first one. Until you hear one's ready, go. You do your first interval and then you knock out your next one. Right. So pretty simple. Do a normal underwater. Be as efficient as possible. Get back to the wall, take a big, deep breath. Three minutes is a lifetime to be sitting on that wall. I'll tell you from running a ton of these, I bet you I've probably done, I don't know, maybe hundreds of pass at, at this point in my career and, and evaluating them. People actually ask, can I get, can I just go early? Like, hey, I'm, I'm recovered. Can I just go and knock the second one out? And usually I'm saying, I'm like, nope, you got another minute and a half. You got to wait before you can go. Because if you've trained appropriately and you're you're ready to take this thing, you knock that first one out. It's not on an interval. You get it done. You're like, oh, no big deal. Yeah, totally ready for this next one. Yep. And then after you finish the second one, you get 10 minutes. A 10-minute rest after the second one. You you essentially did how long's an underwater take? Maybe 20 seconds if you're slow. You know, a 20-second, you know, time. 
So you did 40 seconds of work and you get 10 minutes of rest. Yep. This right before stupid. you roll right into a 500 meter swim. So, right. Um, so 500 meter swim. So as a swimmer all my life, people that do great at the 500, like your collegiate level swimmers, they can do a 500 at race pace at about four minutes and 30 seconds. People that are average high school swimmers can do this anywhere between 8.30 and 10 minutes. So 15 minute is the minimum, which means if you hit 15.01, you have failed here. I understand that this is a pretty large standard. This used to be much shorter. I want to say this used to be 10 minutes and 30 seconds for the yeah. 500 was the, the old school pass. Like when I took it, that was the big thing that my recruiter just kind of laughed. He was like, hey, are you ready to take this pass test? And I was like, yeah, I can, I can take it tomorrow. And he was like, are you sure? Here, here's the swim things. And I was like, no, I was a, I was a mid-level high school swimmer. So I can, I can knock this out like in about in Ohio. minutes. In Ohio. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, first of all, Ohio, Ohio is a swimming state. First of all, it's Texas, California, Ohio, best swimmers in your face, Trent. Texas. <laughs> Texas, California, and Ohio in your face. Um, so the, the thing here is going to be, again, the magic is in the mix. If swimming is the great equalizer, water is always the great equalizer, right? This is at the end of all of your other things. You've already been putting out for a while now, doing a bunch of different modalities. Your your core is already a little bit smoked from all the, the calisthenics that you did. Your cardio is up there a little bit from your 1.5 mile run. So this is why it's important to test these things in order. If you're having problems with the swim and you're like, man, I'm barely getting this swim at 14 minutes and I'm doing that fresh, you got problems. Yeah. Um, okay. So anything else on the IFT before we go on to the CFT, the candidate fitness test? I think the, the OR standard on the swim is uh, 11 minutes because that's really, really doable. I almost there, never there, see there. guys over 11. Yeah. No. So if, 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 I'm trying to think here. So that's 10. Yeah. And if, if you're just aiming, like this is a simple one. So break it up into 10 individual 50s, right? Down and back is a 50. If you can go down and back in your in your regular swim gear and you're focusing on one minute every single time, you're going to crush the swim. The swim is going to be great. So when you're training, if you have to do it from building blocks, maybe you start with 150 and you're like, okay, I want to see what it feels like to go down and back one minute. Then I'm going to add another one. So now I'm doing 100. I'm doing 102 minutes, right? If you multiply that by five, if you're just able to hold that pace, perfect. You're going to be right around that 10 minute mark. You add in a little bit of time for fatigue um, to set into this event. You know, you're not doing foot turns. You're maybe you're just grabbing the wall and turning around. All right, cool. But you're never going to break 11 minutes if you just try to really get close to that one minute per 50 standard. And yeah. we're talking freestyle here. Freestyle. Uh, you, yes. can, you can do the, the combat side stroke, but... Really, you should be training to freestyle because going right back to what Aaron was talking about with the the intervals, five uh, the underwater intervals, like you are going to want to get to the other end of the pool, subsurface, hit that crack, and then get back because the sooner you get back, the more rest you get. And that is a freestyle back. There's no combat side stroke on the way back. It is freestyle. So if you're great at combat side stroke and you're terrible at freestyle you need to get better at freestyle that's all yep. there is to it yep yeah it, it, the, the the being efficient at the freestyle is one of the, i think the most overlooked um items in the pipeline because all of your water con stuff like you're saying any movement through the pool that's not a a, a specific fin movement um you're going to be you're going to be using the freestyle to get to where you need to go and to come back from your underwaters yep. and they're going to start adding stuff to your uh weight you know when you're doing it in uniforms and all that other stuff the more efficient you are uh with your underwaters and your your freestyle you know the more energy you're going to have the more two you're going to have the easier it's going to be so uh efficiency is king for me on this Absolutely. Yeah, and we yeah we tell people this all the time too people are like how good of a swimmer should you be we're like well here's the 500 standard for the ift cft and here's the 1500 standard for the oft but more importantly during selection and during your pre-dive and during your pipeline, that's how you're moving in between point to point in the pool. So the more efficient you are, the less energy you're spending. So totes, totes my goats. Totes my goats. Uh, all right. So candidate fitness test. This is your exit standard uh, for SWIC or the Special Warfare Candidate course. Um, it's also the entry requirements for ANS. 
Um, it's the entry requirements for TACP and TACPO apprentice course. It's also the entry standards for um, Air Force Dive School um, and all that kind of good stuff. So, all right. So this one we'll read off a little bit differently, but very. But starting off is a, a ruck, a ruck march, sixty pounds, three miles, and the standard is uh, less than fifty minutes, five zero minutes. So that's actually more than a fifteen minute pace. Right. So uh, fifteen minutes, pretty much everywhere in the in the civilized world, fifteen minutes <laughs> per mile is the accepted standard for rucking, right? So this is gonna be a little bit different. The CFT is actually built exactly like our OFT is. The past is a, like we said, it's a very basic entry standard. The candidate fitness test is built in, the, in a way, it's almost the same format as the operator fitness test, that OFT tier two fitness test that we take. So we're getting you ready now that you're in the pipeline. We got that initial test out of the way. You've paid your, paid your dues and you're, you're riding the pipe, right? Now you're here in the pipeline and you're, you're doing the CFT. So the tactical ruck, again, is at uh, 50 minutes. So great, uh, less than or equal to. Here's where we're gonna give you some, this isn't G2, this is just information. If you give me 50 minutes to do this ruck, I am not gonna do this ruck in 25 minutes. I'm probably, <laughs> gonna, do, I'm probably gonna do this ruck at a nice even pace where I'm stretching my legs out and I'm getting used to the weight on my back. I'm letting my body warm up a little bit. I might even start really, really slow. I might start at that 16 minute pace, that 17 minute pace, and then ease in to closer to that 15 minute pace at the end so that my number is in between 45 and 50 minutes so that it's, it's nice and easy. It's not killing me. I get to the end and I'm not absolutely crushed. Nope. I, I it, it's funny when we first started the prep course, we had a, a ruck test that we were doing with the with the candidates, and we actually had to get away from um, instead of setting a, a a maximum time that you know, they they could do, and we'd have guys go out there and start running right, which is good. They were motivated, and people would be running the ruck course. Uh, but the problem is, is we started running to injuries and and heat injuries and all these other things, and it was always some of our best candidates. So what we ended up doing is giving them a five minute window that they had to come back in uh, to, to keep them, to get them to pace out their rucks. Like rucks are a little bit different, you know? Um, right. So take your time on this. And I know it sounds counterintuitive to everything else we say, like, oh, be the first and blah, 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 but not so much on the ruck, just come in under 50. That's that's fine. I won't I won't come in first on a ruck. <laughs> <laughs> Again, little legs. Tink, 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 yeah. tink, tink. you will come Stride in first. it out. <laughs> yeah, you, you'll come in first on number of steps that you took. Uh, yeah. as compared to everybody else, like you're <laughs> and, definitely going to get your steps for that. Day. And, yeah, um, and Taylor and Starts it, says you need fifteen thousand steps a day. So thank goodness yeah. you you can knock this out in a single three mile event. That's perfect. Yeah. Um, a, a little behind the curtain as well. So the, the CFT and the OFT, no kidding, that they're built off of job standards. So we call that the tactical ruck, it, it's actually called infill. And your your last event here is your, your combat swim, your combat fin swim, which is, we'll talk about at the end, but we actually call that exfill. And then everything kind of between there, like we no kidding took job standards. Like this, this ruck is like, okay, we'll put your ruck on. We're going to ruck for three miles to get to target. And then all of the other events that go, you know, hey, we wanna look at strength and power. We wanna look at your ability to, uh, you know, when we talk about the pro agility drill, like that is no kidding, I'm up, he sees me, I'm down. I'm gonna go 10 meters this way and sprint over here. Th these are all things that are like specific to aspect war jobs. So if you think of it like that, it's not just a fitness test. It's a fitness test that has a direct relation to things that we do in the job. And the ruck is the first one. So think about rucking with your friends to go no kidding on target. You're not going to try to like beat your entire team there. You're going to try to make sure that everybody can get there in a certain amount of time. That certain amount of time is less than 50 minutes carrying all of your mission gear. That's where we got this, this test. Yep. So then uh, moving on as, as the doggo <laughs> the dog. goes in the room. I know. Dog, you know what dogs dog can't nail, do, Trent? Nails. You Wrong know what dogs can't do? Yeah, the standing long jump. They're not very good at it because it's a bipedal exercise. <laughs> so we're moving on to the standing long jump. This one, this bad boy measures explosive power, right? So if you think about a, a clean or a snatch, the Olympic lifting movements, 
your hips have to open violently and you have to really cause a lot of power. The standing long jump is a way to judge that explosive power and that athleticism. You have to get 93 inches uh, for max points on this one. And the minimum points is 16 inches, right? So, uh, or I'm sorry, the minimum for this one is a 75 inch long jump. And that gets you your, your eight points. So there's minimums for all of these things, right? 75 inches on a minimum, 93 for the maximum. What's the OR standard on this one? Jared, first of all, what, what, what you got? What, what, what are you dropping on this long jump? I, I actually want to say I'm right around an 84. Okay. Yeah. Like, that legitimately. I, th I mean, so I'm, so that's funny. Cause I'm, so I'm 64 inches tall and I can jump long jump tall, which I, that's probably normal. We but... should actually use that as a measure. Like I can <laughs> jump, I can jump 1.5 peaches. <laughs> a unit of measure. <laughs> <laughs> Single unit of measure. It's speech. I like seeing guys right around the 90 on this one. Guys and gals right around, um, you know, the 90 is, is not hard here, I think. Unless you're a shorter dude, this, this one really does not favor short dudes at all. Like, unless you are just like J-Max, super duper springy like a flea, um, it really does. Like, the, the taller, taller candidates have an easier time with this one. But I think if you're at 90, I think that's a good spot for me. Yeah. I'm good with that. Yeah. All right. <laughs> But the one that I do, I mean, for an old man, excel at is the pro agility drill. Uh, yep. Lower to the ground, lower center of gravity. So if you're Able thinking to turn about fast. it, mm -hmm. if yeah, you're thinking about the, it, those you know, quick feet. Line, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> like I like little, it. like little Chucky, Chucky doll running behind it. <laughs> exactly. So the pro agility drill goes like this. There's three cones. You start in the center. You'll be in a three point stance. You will say go and you will you'll have multiple times you'll go to your right twice and you'll go to your left twice so you'll start in the middle whichever way you're going to go let's say you're going right on the command of go you will explode to your right you'll run five yards to your right you will then turn around uh you'll always turn towards the person that's timing you as well right so you're facing the person that's timing you you'll say go you touch the cone to your right so that's a left hand turn so you touch the cone with your right hand or you break the count the plane of the cone with your right hand, you make that left hand turn, you pass the center point and you go to the cone that is now furthest away from you. So you, at first you run five meters to the right. At that point you turn and you run 10 meters to your left. You touch that cone or you break the plane of the cone, you turn towards the counter and you then turn back towards the center cone and you sprint through the center cone at which time your time stops. This is also commonly referred to as the 5-10-5 drill for that reason. You're running five yards, you're turning, you're running 10 yard um, meters, I'm sorry. You're running 10 meters, you're turning, and you're running five more yards to finish this off. And you'll do two times to your right, two times to your left, and you take the best score that you got out of those bad boys. Um, fun fact, if you uh, right-hand dominant people typically run better to their right you just explode better off of your left foot going to your right. The uh, times here, minimum is 5.75. Maximum for this is actually pretty fast at 5.09 seconds. Trent, what do you, uh, what do you think is appropriate for people on this drill? I think like a 5.15 is, is pretty, pretty attainable on this. Yeah. Uh, I, now, I will tell you, you're, you're impressive if you're going sub five. Sub five on this, I've seen, you know, I've, I've got a couple of monsters that I work with that'll drop, you know, 4.9, 4.85s. It's impressive to watch. I ain't getting there. Every time I make that turn, I'm like, oof, I'm about to, my knee is about to blow up. Now, I, I have a question from where you guys are at. Does the person giving you the test make you uh, guess? Like, do they just stand there in front of you and randomly say right or left on this test? Because I know that <laughs> sometimes when I've taken it in the no, past, for us that's... The person will be like, okay, whichever direction yeah. I say is the direction you're going to go. And so you just sit there. So you're not like leaning in a direction and you don't know which direction they're going to say. And they'll say left or right. I don't believe the narrative tells you which way. I, I, I don't think it specifies in the narrative. You have to do right first or you have to do left first. But I will tell you that on the score sheet, it starts with right. So yeah. almost, it's almost always our strength and conditioning coach is like, do you want to do left first? You, you have to let me know. Because if not, like I'm just going to assume you're going to go to your right. Um, or, you know, sometimes I've heard it in the brief as well. They'll just be like, Hey, which way do you want to go? Just tell me. And the, the operator will step up and be like, I want to go to the left first and be like, okay, you're going to do two left in a row then. So you'll do a left here. And typically the way this works is especially with a lot of people, 
is you have a big line of people. They jump in, one guy, bam, goes. The next guy is already on that center cone, mm -hmm. ready, bam, go. And then you just kind of cycle around. So it's really common for the operator to step up and go, hey, this is my second time. I'm going left. And the, the scorekeeper or the guy running the about will be like, oh, okay, cool. Here we go. There's also usually a gaggle of dudes behind the stopwatch too to, Always. to see because it does get pretty competitive. It gets, <laughs> this is a great thing. That doesn't too. sound like this us at all. No, this, it's, it's the same for the OFT as it is for the CFT. Man, you, you were competing. You like, uh, I had a very, very good team uh, leader of mine who just happens to be the uh, group commander down at uh, San Antonio currently. And one of the Rangers that was on our SST was talking about how every day we would have a training event. He goes, man, when did this become a competition? And without every missing time. a beat, without missing a beat, TX is like the second that you went into selection. The second you showed up to collection, <laughs> selection, this has been a, uh, a competition. Yep. So there we are. Yeah, that's, that is so true. And I love it. It's great. Yep. Uh, All right. Okay. So this is something that I, I honestly have never seen anybody fail at. In fact, this is mm -hmm. just like Trent said earlier. This is one of those that you kind of like, hey, get to the, the max, if you will, but you don't need to trap bar deadlift. 500 600 pounds like no go go to what it is because we have now what i have seen is I, I haven't one i haven't seen anybody fail this on the other side though i've seen dudes get into that competitive mode right which hey i love i breathe you know i preach it but um you know where they're going into the 550 600 pounds because there's like i can just keep going i just keep going and then pop something just broke yep. so yep there's no need for that. Right. So the minimums here is a, is a 225. There's a trap bar deadlift, and this is for a three rep max. So trap bar deadlift, you're going to go for three reps, and it's a minimum of 225 uh, and a maximum of 350. Okay. So remember, your trap bar is essentially 65 pounds or so. So at 290 pounds on the trap bar. You're simply going to extend to a full standing position with a touch, not a bounce on the ground. And you're going to extend again all the way up. I, I, I have the same exact experience with you, Peaches. A lot of the guys that we work with, they step right up to the 350 and they're like, okay, this is not, this is not breaking a sweat with me at all. I'm going to go ahead and drop this bad boy and go. I imagine about 90% of the people in the pipeline are probably doing that same thing for the CFT. Trent, have you seen anything different there? No, I mean, so few people fill this test out of SWIC regardless. Um, right. And the trap bar deadlift is, it's it, it favors, you know, people that are, are squat centric, they can do the squat motion. People that are deadlift centric can do the deadlift motion. Uh, so it's kind of the best of both worlds. As long as your posterior chain is, is solid, shouldn't be a problem. Sure, so I, I think we agree here. You should be able to max this one out you know, pretty yeah. good. It, it, if not, you should definitely be above the 315. You know, that's, that's about twice of anybody's given body weight. You should be right around that, uh, right around that area. So moving on to pull-ups, if you remember from the, uh, from the IFT, we said that pull-ups are right in that 12 range. Well, you'll see here, the minimum is eight. The maximum is 15. If you're dropping consistently 12 pull-ups in the IFT, by the time that you get out of SWIC, the 15 pull-up max here should be no problem for you. Yep. And I Moving can tell on. you right now, I can tell you right now, I'm, I'm knocking out 14. So, right. Like, and and I'm, I'm taking an, uh, an OFT next month and I will definitely post my, um, post my scores and all that kind of stuff just to give everybody a, an idea that, you know, uh, whatever I'm the old man. Right. So everybody should be able nice. to beat me. Is that what the old trope is? Yes, yeah. exactly. Everybody should yeah. be running away from you. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> um, so now moving on, and by the way, these all have times associated with it too. We haven't been reading it out, but there's a whole narrative that's associated with the CFT for how much time, you know, you get 30 minutes after the ruck. Um, you get, I want to say two to three minutes after the standing long jump. There's minutes in the narrative where the person running this evaluation will be like, okay, we're on a two minute rest. You know, your first person is going to be on the deadlift bar in this amount of time. So just because we're not reading it out doesn't mean they don't exist. We just haven't been reading out every single one for you, but there's an entire narrative that you'll go through. So it'll be the exact same thing. And you don't need to worry about testing this test. 
during your prep time, during your time leading up to, you can to see how you feel, or you can, you can work these movements, but it's not necessarily, you know, crazy important that you're running this test exactly the standard. You have plenty of time to get there. So uh, the next one, this is, this is a sneaky, sneaky exercise that it's only one go. It's one shot. It's a farmer's carry in your hand. You have two 53 pound kettlebells and it's a hundred meters and it's as fast as you can go. This one is actually very sneaky in the way that it smokes you. So it's a minimum of 31 seconds. And to max the test out, you have to go sub 23 seconds. Typically it's a hundred meter course. You run 50 meters, you turn, and then you run 50 meters on the way back. It is not a straight, uh, a straight run. Typically it's set up on a, on a shorter course. This one is sneaky. And I will, I like, I don't know why, but running with kettlebells in your hand, first of all, no one looks cool doing it. Your nope. arms are always like this spaghetti because the kettlebells, they want to pull your arms straight down, but you can't run like that. Like you're sprinting to get this test done. So everybody runs with this weird arm thing that, uh, that happens. And then you have to accelerate to a full sprint, then decelerate in order to, to turn. And that it's 53 pound kettlebell in your hand. So you basically have to stop and turn as, as hard as you can to start. And then you have to accelerate to full speed again in order to get this done. The OFT standard is actually, I want to say it's 20 seconds for max points. You have to go sub 20 in order yeah, to get max. And we'll look at it here in a second. 21 seconds, maybe. Or 21 seconds. Yeah. You have to get 20.99 yeah. or lower for max. It's tough guys like, like guys that are really good runners, guys that can run distance that are marathon runners, you put weight in their hands and they're like, oh no. And then guys that aren't good runners, you know, maybe the 53 pounds isn't the problem for them, but you have to sprint. You, you gotta, you gotta be moving um, with these weights. Mm -mm -mm. Yeah, there's no secret behind that. No, it, this is one of those, you just put your head down and you just gotta go. Like you just gotta put out. So I'm trying okay. to think here. This is where the, what, the what, some what, of the cumulative, sorry, starts to hit you too, no. because you've done your pull-ups, which is your grip. You've done your trap bar deadlift, which isn't difficult, but it's grip intensive. But it's posterior chain. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, and then we're going to hit you chain. with, right. And then we're going to hit you with the kettlebell run. And then the event after that is where the, the puking happens. I don't want to talk. I don't want to get into it. Yeah. Exactly. That's the one wanna... that everybody hates. Oh God. Oh God. And it really is. And I, I think I said it earlier, but the magic is in the mix. Right? Yeah. Like the, the event that we're going to talk about next. So let's, let's, let's close up on the shuttle run, right? Like, first of all, you're just going to have to, it's grit, it's determination. You're just going to have to put out, it's going to suck. If you want to max this out, you're going to have to go. I actually think this, the, the 23, I'm good for that, for the OR standard. If you, if you can run a 24, like if I'm watching a candidate and they're already doing like a 23 or 24 in SWIC, getting ready to take this test, I'm pretty impressed because that's, that's actually pretty tough to do for a couple of different reasons that we already talked about, but yeah, I'm good with that. Here's the worst, the absolute worst part of the CFT of the OFT, just general. And if, if my strength and conditioning coach and his name is Dan, if they, if he programs a shuttle run repeater, <laughs> I walk out of the gym. I'm like, today's a recovery day, Jan. I'm not doing this. So the shuttle run, um, it's on a 25 meter course, right? It's a 300 meter shuttle run. So it's a 300 meter shuttle run on a 25 meter course. So down and back is 50 meters. Check my math on this one. You have to do that six times. Yep. The minimum for this is an 82 seconds. So a minute and 22.5 seconds. The fastest is 69.7 seconds. So 109.7 is what you need to max this out. I will tell you from personal experience, this is where people puke. This is where people, and, and you have to run two and it's the average of the two runs. So it's not just like one time ago, you run this, you get three minutes rest and you run a second one. And then they average those two goes between the turning with the kettlebells in your hand, between the posterior engagement from the deadlifts, between the ruck that started this thing out. By the time you get here, you're pretty well smoked. Those and hammies. This is, those hammies and, and you're just turning the entire time. I just, you're, it's oh. a 25 meter course. So you're continually turning and putting stress on those hammies. Again, decelerating into the turn, accelerating out of the turn, trying to find a way to do that efficiently. You just it feel awful. All of your blood <clears throat> rushed to your legs 
and it's oh concrete level. Ugh. It's it's <laughs> bad. Um, I believe our standard for this on the OFT, and we'll talk about it, is sub sixty nine seconds. In order to do it, like I'll tell you, the OR standard on this would just get it done. Just get it done, my babies. I'm sorry that you guys are working so hard because uh, the 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 minimum for this one again 122. Uh, you know that's that's actually really really slow. You know for a 300 meter, you're thinking a minute 22. That's that is very slow. However, it the magic is in the mixing here, and it's more art than science. By the time you get here, I get it. I, I feel you. So uh, I'm I'm okay with however it is that you need to get this done. But if you're a good runner, if you're in shape, if you've recovered appropriately. The 69 second uh, max isn't isn't too hard to get to. Well, and, and this exactly. is where, and then moving right on. Oh, go ahead. No, I was just going to say this is where. Right on. Dang. The, if you struggle on the the farmers carries and the trap bar deadlift for some reason, if you're a a, a, a smaller guy or a smaller framed or whatever, and you and you don't max out points on those, this is where you're you're going to have to make up for it. You know what I mean? So like this test yeah. is kind of like um uh test your overall fitness so if, if you have a hard time with the weight as much you know more than some of the other guys you better be quick on the shuttle run at the end yep for sure yeah going um and then going right into the the swim and now if you're looking at the score sheet um which i i will you know when we edit all this you know we'll we'll flash it up there and all that kind of stuff but um You'll see at the end that there's a, a combat swim, a 1500 meter combat swim, or a mile and a half run. Um, and it says, or. Uh, the whole reason behind that is, uh, especially in the light of COVID, or if you are at a location that the pool is shut down or you don't have access to a pool, um, that's where you get the, the option to run. Otherwise, like the swim is the standard. Uh, the, the mile and a half run is just in case something uh, or your location isn't conducive to a pool. So this is um, this is not an event where you typically see people fail, especially since I'm the last person out of the pool with these usually. And even I uh, pass, not, not with flying colors, but easily pass. So um, the other thing that we didn't really talk about with all these is that you're in boots and uniform with all this. You're in a combat uniform, mm -hmm. right? So this is not like, hey, I'm just, I'm doing my 300 meter shuttle run kind of thing or rucking with, you know, running shoes and shorts. This is, I'm in uniform and I'm doing all of this. So you can imagine a fin swim of, of any kind uh, in uniform is going to create a lot of drag. A mile and a half run in uniform is going to not be very much fun. Right, so, exactly. So if you look at the minimums here, so it's a 4350 minimum for a 1500 swim. And again, it's in a full combat uniform. The max is 3537. So simple math again, it's about two minutes per um, two minutes per hundred, right? So 15 times two minutes per hundred, that gets you to 30. It's a little bit more than that. So I want to say it's 230 per hundred. I will tell you straight up, if you think you're going to get in and lead arm trail arm this bad boy at the end of this <laughs> test, you're not. I, uh, like maybe if you're a really, really adept swimmer and a really, really good fin uh, swimmer, maybe, but that's like the top 2% of the entire class. I would tell you, start off with combat side stroke right away with your fin, start off right away with combat side stroke. And then if you feel like you can transition into lead arm, trail arm after you're on pace, and again, typically about one minute per 50 is going to be right where you need to be. So down and back is a 50 on a short course. If you can nail this to where you're getting right about a minute, anywhere from a minute to a minute and 30 per 50, you're going to be fine, right? 45 minute or 4350 is a lifetime for 1500. I don't, I just don't want to be in a pool for that long. Like that. I get all pruny, you know, yeah, fingers, you know, know, just look at this face. I got a whole skincare routine, um, but that's a lifetime. It really is. So if again, in, in your combat uniform, and it's got to be full sleeve, like some guys try to show up, you know, one time wearing, and this is for the OFT, wearing like the the polo or the rugby tops that are short sleeve. And everybody was like, mm -mm, go, nah. put on long, go put on, nah, dog, go put on your long sleeve. This is a combat uniform. So um, the run, and again, it's in a full uniform, right? So boots, pants, boots and pants, and boots and pants, boots, <laughs> pants, and a uh, combat shirt. 
the the minimum is 1317 um and then to max this out it's 1110 so you'll see right there we're telling you the combat run for a mile and a half is no kidding 1110 to max it out so 1109 or better and you get max points here but it's at the end of a pretty heinous fitness test and you're in a uniform and it's going to slow you down it is going to slow you down and i'll tell you what that that mile and a half run is not a joke either. Um, it's, yeah, it's not easy. Because you don't... going, like, just like Aaron said at the beginning, all of this builds on each other. So you can imagine a ruck at 60 pounds doing three miles. Then you go from the standing long jump, which, okay, whatever. Pro agility, no big deal. You're taxing those hammies in that posterior chain with the, the deadlift, then with the um, your shoulders with the farmer's carry, and, and the pull-ups, and then you got that 300-meter sprint to buy, um, that mile-and-a-half run is not very much fun at all. It hurts, and, yeah. And I'll, I'll tell you, the last one I did, it, I was on the struggle bus really bad um, because we didn't have a pool here, so I had to do the run, and it was I, – I was worried. Like, that was me. Now, granted, I'm not as in shape as, as you folks out there, but, like, I was a little worried uh, – whether or not I was going to make it. Yeah, for sure. It's weird. Where's but, the bench press in all this? I don't understand in the curls. <laughs> this is, this is a stupid like, yeah, right? It turns out, yeah, it turns out my training plan has been solely focused on aesthetics. I don't know if I'm going <laughs> to do well on it. Um, but, but that's it. So the combat fitness or the candidate fitness test is meant to judge how ready you are out of prep out of the special warfare candidate course, right? We're able to look and they establish minimums. They establish an exit standard that we can say, no kidding, you're ready for the rigors of what you're gonna do next, which is assessment selection. After you get done with assessment selection though, for the rest of the time that you're in the pipeline, you move on to the OFT. I don't think we need to go into the OFT super in depth. It's the exact same events in the exact same way as the CFT, but there are, if, if you wanna window into you know really what the standards are um there are some different standards that we have here so the ruck is uh it's under 49 minutes mm -hmm. i believe yep yeah okay, and so on the cft the sheet at the bottom of the cft sheet it, it tells you what the what's been added the right. for the scores versus the oft yep so um we added yeah so we subtract one inch there so um from the the standing long jump, you basically, the CFT is about a minute slower and everything and two reps or so below what the OFT is. So our minimums are two reps higher. Our times are a minute faster. And that's essentially the exact same. And you'll take the OFT all the way through the pipeline, through your apprentice courses, and then all the way through your career. So we take the OFT now as our standard fitness test. Yep. And the, the, the thing is, it's like Aaron takes the same when one I do, same with Trent, same with a brand new senior airman or staff sergeant. There's no, like, if there's I say no that age I am, range, yeah. right, there's, yeah. So if I, or, or key later uh, category or anything like that. So nope. if I'm saying that I am fit and able enough to jump out of planes, go to a shooting school, do whatever it is, um, as, as the senior enlisted the squadron, I have the same exact standard as a brand new dude on team because I, I go out and I do the same exact thing that these guys do. So I've got to be able to handle it. My body's got to be able to handle it. So I got to be able to do this as, just as well as everybody else. Yeah, and that, that came from a pretty good question. It was, hey, do senior NCOs take the same test? I believe was the question in the DMs, 100%. And the, the minimums are the minimums. If you go out there and you can't do eight pull-ups, well, you can't go jump out of planes. And this fixed a long time. There was a lot of time in my career where there were some people that were just like, eh, you know, I, I don't do so hot on the PT test, but uh, we're just going to kind of pencil whip it and we'll be fine. This, this test leveled the bubbles for everybody. And it's like, hey, this is the standard. This is what we do go out and knock it out. You don't, this test is easy to pass. It's hard to max out. It's hard to get a 100 on this test on the OFT and on the CFT, but it's, it's supposed to be like that. Your fittest people are able to drop a hundred on this test. The test is hard to fail because the minimums are set at a really appropriate level. However, if you can't do this, you can't operate. And this is one of the things, you know, Peaches was just alluding to, but 
you know, if you can't pass this test, you get put into a no training status. Mm -hmm. That means until until you can pass this test, you don't get to go jump. You don't get to go shoot. You don't get to go do cool JTAC stuff. You don't get to go and, and do avalanche training or mountaineering or none of that stuff. Like this you also, is. You also good. run the risk of, um, I mean, if you're really if you're really bad and you're failing it and you're a fat body and you're not able to train and stuff like that, you run the risk of getting your extra pays taken away. So um, I don't think we've ever actually covered the, the extra pays that we get, but, you know, we get, I, I, we can go into it in another episode, but we get as, as controllers, PJs, tag P's, SR, people that do special duty type stuff, get extra pays every single month. And those are at risk if you cannot pass this test. I'm not saying that if you fail at once, those are going to get taken away. But <clears throat> like we do an inherently dangerous job. We do an incredibly physically demanding job, um, which you got to be able to handle this test. You got to be able to handle the rigors that the job does. And if you can't figure this test out and you can't pass this test, then you can't do what we do, meaning you can't also get the extra page, can't go hang out with the boys, can't do all the other stuff that we get to do. Yep. Well said, Chief. I felt a uh, knife hand coming in there, too. Like I was like, oh, no, watch out. What? Oh, no. All right. So we started with the IFT. We used to call it the past. That's not the name anymore. Tell your friends, spread the word, start a fire down here at the grassroots level. It's called the IFT, the initial fitness test. We hit you off with the ones ready minimums that we want to see you hit when you when you're able to hit this test point by point by point on the appropriate rep and you're knocking those numbers out and we can uh, we can scroll back up here. So for the initial fitness test, pull-ups we said was 12. Sit-ups we said was 70. Push-ups we said was really in the 65 range. Your 1.5 mile run, you need to be in between that 930 to 945 range. The underwaters are pass fail, just get them done. And then for the swim, we said about a minute per 50, which gets you in the 10 to 12 minute range for the 500 meter swim. If you are knocking those numbers out and you can do so consistently, if you can run two IFTs in a row and your numbers don't change and you're doing it perfect to the letter of the law, ooh, monster, you're killing it. But yeah. you, 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 you talk about that though, but like uh, we've all said it before, or at least I, I've said it anyway, and I think we all have is that, you know, you get the question of, hey, how do I know that I'm ready? Well, Trent just trained today, right? He trained this morning. Um, if I were to go, Trent, right after this, you got 20 minutes, we're going to run another IFT. Um, Trent better be like, okay, I need to hydrate and I go crush it. Yeah. And, and there's no, there's no like, Hey, he's getting max numbers, but he's definitely not getting the minimum, but right. he just trained already this morning, you know, two hours ago. Now he is here. You're about to do it again. And there should be no issue. That's how you know you're ready when you can on a moment's notice, all right, I got 20 minutes. I got to knock out an IFT and there's no issue. That's actually happened to me before is I've trained. Yep. I, I worked out <laughs> and I, I remember it was a pretty hard workout. And then it, the, you know, boss came to me and was like, Hey, we're knocking out a PT test. It's like, okay. And the, those push ups <laughs> okay. sucked a little bit more than they usually do. But you know, like that's just the way it is. Yep. Well, and to, to put this out there and how this transfers over, because you always want to kind of link these things into the real world. By the way, that whole thing where somebody can come into your office and go, we're doing this today. For pararescuemen, that applies to the 259 line items that you're current and qualified on at any single time. I can go into, into anybody's, into our Bible, into our CFETP, and I can go, hey, you're supposed to supervise and lead and train at a mission. And let's say that mission is in the water. I can walk into any PJ's desk as the chief is standing by. I can walk in and go, hey, you're signed off on this line item. Come show me right now. You're getting evaluated. That applies to everything we do, not just PT tests. So and, that's and the, that's in a that's in a training environment. What about real world? If you're deployed or if you're on a CSAR mission, I just got done doing a freaking small off squat freaking program, right? Dude. And, and all of a sudden, hey, we got a QRF, a quick reaction force that we got to go out to, uh, and we're we're hit like we're running out to the birds or we're running out to the vehicles and. Guess what? My my legs, I can't feel them, but I tell you what, uh, I better be able to move. Like that just that exact, happens. That exact thing happened to me in Iraq in 2010, uh, 2009, 2010. No kidding. I, I just racked a, a weight. I think I was, I was squatting 315 for a 
a number of reps. I don't know what it is. I'm not going to put it out there because I'll get made fun of you. <laughs> if, if I say it was too many reps, people will tell me I'm lying. If I say it was too few reps, people are going to call me names. Either way. So I, I no kidding, right? It was one of my last sets. It was hard. I rack it. The pager went off. That's how you know that this is a long time ago. And I was like, don't be nines. Don't be nines. Because if it was all nines, it meant we were leaving right then. And I look and it was nines. And my legs were concrete and I'm just running, like trying to put a uniform on and throw my boots on and throw my kid on. It's terrible. But that's, that's what it is. What are you going to do? Not train every day you're on call. I'm on call exactly. right now. You know yeah. what I mean? Like we could get called to go to the mountains right now and go do stuff. What am I going to do? Not go to the gym. Yeah. It's not how we do things. All right. Any more on the IFT? We got off on a tangent there. Nope. All right. <laughs> IFT. It's your ticket to ride the ride. It's not the call the pass test anymore. It's the initial fitness test. Then you're going to take the candidate fitness test. And this is based off job requirements. This is at the end of SWIC. And you're going to have a bunch of chances to work through all of these modalities at SWIC. And then this is going to be your ticket to be like, you're ready to go for assessment selection. Let's go to the NFL combine. Here are the events. Let's see you perform. And then after that, once you get in the pipeline and you're, you're living that good life, you got selected, you went through pre-dive, you got through dive school, and you're, you're in your selective um, lanes where you're going. You're going to start working that OFT, the operator fitness test. It's called the tier two fitness test. The CFT and the OFT are exactly the same, except the OFT is just a little bit harder. It's got a little bit of higher floor for your minimums because you should be able to put out, but you should be able to do it anytime, any place, perfectly to standard. And bam, nailed it. And time. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> So that's it, guys. We covered uh, IFT, OFT, CFT for you today. As always, throw your comments, throw your questions, either in the DMs or in the comment section of the YouTube. Make sure to follow the YouTube, like and subscribe, turn on your notifications. We're putting a ton of stuff in there. We are not good enough at the Instagram game to tell you every single time that we put something in the YouTube, but there is going to be a ton more content that's going to be exclusive to YouTube. So make sure to check that out. Thanks to everybody that's listening. Thanks for following. Share it with your friends. Give us a review. It really does help us out on Apple Podcasts or wherever you get your podcasts. And as always, we appreciate you guys supporting us and we're here to support you. So as always, train hard. We appreciate it. We'll see you next time. Later. Later. Later.